Well, let everything that has breath praise the living God. Welcome today for the Morris Cirillo Manifested Sons of God School of Ministry. Don Mandel, we are in the incredible Legacy Pavilion Theater. You know, we're not just presenting this, but we have received this and we're receiving it again and again and again. What a message that the Spirit of God has for us today. Yes, and you're touching on the principle of repetition. And Brother Srilla was never in vain repetition. Some things he couldn't say enough, like I greet you in the name oh, that is man. above every name. He could say that a million times. Here, he's hearkening us back to the same scripture. So my radar is telling me Romans 8, 29. I'm not just gonna hastily say, oh, I know that, I understand it, but I'm gonna allow this, the Spirit of God to take me deep that he did predestinate us to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, Greg, the word doxa actually came in through the faith. Probably in Greek literature, it was more about your outlook, your opinion. But when the Septuagint was, was written, uh, they, they chose to take the word uh, kavod, the Hebrew word for glory, and use it for doxa. And when you get through watching this segment, the doxa is going to be oozing out of you under the whole environment all around you. And I tell you what, Don, I feel the glory, the presence of God. I have never been as excited about a session as I am. I don't want to wait another minute. If you are ready, Brother Srilla was taking us into the incredible book of Romans. Today's message, you are marked by God for greatness and glory. God isn't depending on anything you or I possess. If you are ready, day four, I want you to just say, I am what God says I am. And today I'm stepping in to my end time destiny. Join us in welcoming once again, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. God planned that through the death and the resurrection that many sons, what did we say? God wanted what? He wants a family. He wants children. Say it, God wants children. Nobody wanted to be barren. God gave birth to his creatures, his children, Adam and Eve, by the breath that came out of his mouth. He created himself in his own image, a family. God planned that through the death and the resurrection of his son, Jesus, that many sons would be born who would be the express image of their elder brother, Jesus Christ, as he is the express image of God. Yeah. Romans 8, 29. Write it down. Read it in your Bible. Turn to it. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. Say that word conform. Say it again. To the image of his son that he, Jesus, might be the first born among many brethren. It's possible by the Spirit of God that is placed within us. It is not possible by an exercise of man. 
We'll talk about that in just a minute. It is not possible by a determination of our own will. But it is only possible by the Spirit of God that God places within us that works His work, that is changing us and bringing us into the manifestation where we are being changed into the image and into the likeness of God's dear Son. Romans 8, 29. Let's read it again. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. Now, say that word conformed again. Conform. Say it again. Conform. Now, that doesn't sound like my class. Say it again. Conform. That sounds better. Now, this word conform is a very unusual word. It's a little bit like this word doxa. You remember what we said that that word means? It means all that God has and all that God is. Tuck that into your spirit. But the word conform from the literal Greek means to bring to the same outward expression as something else is. Now, let's put this all together. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to bring to the same outward expression as the image of his son. You say to me, Brother Sula, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you this, that God planned for you to be brought to the same outward expression of Jesus exactly as he is now. I don't think you understood that. Either that or it's going inside your being because that was a little patty cake like my grandchildren do. Listen to 1 John 4, 17. Listen to what it says. As he is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. Now, remember what I said a few minutes ago when we read that scripture together? 1 John 3, 2. Now are we the sons of God? Now, remember what I told you to put in your spirit on this earth, not when we get to heaven on this earth. Now are we the sons of God? Not when we get to heaven and you think that some mystical transformation will take place, but as he is, so are we in this world, on this earth. God 
intends that the same glory radiate from your being. What glory? The same image of his son whom he did foreknow he also did predestine to be conformed to bring about the outward remember Christ was the visible visible Let's get out of this ethereal, mystical realm. We're not talking about something that we can't touch or taste or see. We're talking about something that people can touch, taste, see. The word confirm again. He predestined to conform us. He predestined to bring about, to bring it out of us, to get it out of us. The same outward expression of the image of his son. He predestined us that we would manifest the doxa. I forgot to tell you, devil, you're a liar. Yeah. I just want to keep telling him. Come on, put your finger over there. Tell him. Say, devil, yeah. you stay on your side of the line. Stay on your side of the line. Devil, yeah. you're a liar. Hebrews with me. Second chapter and the ninth and the tenth verses. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory. Say it, glory. glory. Say it, doxa. doxa. Say it, all that God has, all that God has. And, all that God and all that God is. Now, we see Jesus <laughs> who was crowned with this glory, all that God has and all that God is, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. Now, I want to give the devil a good broadside again this morning like we've been doing here. So many of us have read this scripture and we think of Jesus as our captain and our file leader and we're marching behind him and we think of him leading us to heaven. Come on. When you read that scripture, that's what you always believed it was. But it doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that he's leading you to heaven. It means that Jesus, through his suffering and through his death, who was crowned with the glory of God, with all that God has and all that God was and all that God is, it became him for whom are all things.
things and for whom are by whom are all things it be who to him in bringing many sons many sons he became the elder brother he became the firstborn now he's bringing you and I not to heaven but he's bringing you and I into the glory into the revelation into the manifestation of all that God has and all that God is He's leading us. He's leading us. He's taking us into the realm of the presence of his Father by his life, by his death, by his resurrection. All right, say this after me. I, I am being Conform by his spirit, the very life of God is flowing out of me as it flowed out of Jesus. It is that life that heals the sick, that casts out devils, that sets the captives free. <laughs> Now, if you can think of it like this, think of it like this. Thank you, Brother Dennis. Think of it like this. I am a human body carrying around in me the glory of God. Come on, say it. I am a human body carrying about in me the glory of God. Say it again. I am a human body carrying about in me the glory of God. Say it one more time. I am a human body carrying about in me the doxa, the doxa. The glory of God, all that God has, all that God is, I'm carrying it around in me. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Glory! Let's go back to Matthew 17, where we were a few days ago. We are on the Mount of Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus takes Peter and James and John and his brother. Something supernatural, <clears throat> excuse me, in these verses, something unusual, something supernatural happens. Jesus, remember, is still in the form of his human flesh. But right before Peter, James, and John, his outward expression was changed. Have you turned to Matthew 17? Verse 1 and 2. And they brought them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light. Jesus was transfigured. Now, 
Remember when we talked about that word transfigured, we said that it's translated from the Greek word, which means changed. Jesus was the son of God in a human body. What was he carrying around? Say it. Say it, as he is, is. so are we. we. What are we carrying around in our human body? (laughs) Second Corinthians 3.18, all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continued to be whole in the word of God as in a mirror, the glory, the doxa, all that God is and all that God has. Now, how? Do we behold this? We behold it through the word. Now, listen to me, folks. I'm not up here propagating some mystical, ethereal, something that you cannot get a hold of. You want to be changed into his glory? Behold him in his word like a mirror. You can't get this by sitting in a school here, brother, and just shouting and jerking and jiggling and getting one goose bump on another. You can get it when you receive the revelation I give to you as the prophet of God and then you walk out of here and you put the seeds I put in your spirit, you put them into practice. Now, how is this going to happen, Brother Shrill? You want to be a mirror image of God? Come on, you want to be a mirror image of Jesus? All of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God as a mirror, the glory of our Lord. You get into his word and not with the negative thoughts of all of these individuals who are giving you all these guilt trips, who are laying all this heavy condemnation on you. You begin to see God in all of his glory, in all of his power, in all of his majesty, in all of his might, in all of his greatness, and you are soon going to be walking around manifesting in your body the glory, the might, the power of the God that you see. of this scripture all of us as with unveiled face because we continue to be whole and I'm not going to be able to get to this other part this morning but let me interject this it not only comes from beholding his glory in the word what you see of him how you see him 
but it also comes through deep prayer, fellowship, and communion with him. Now, I won't be able to get to that part, but I had to put that in there because the two go together, the word and prayer, the word and communion, the word and fellowship. You can't separate them. All of us as with unveiled face because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured. We're constantly being changed. We're constantly experiencing Experiencing God bringing the outward expression of something. Now you're going to get a bombshell a little later on. Of something that's been planted in our beings. And it's God's will to mature it. We are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing, in case you're wondering, I'm reading 2 Corinthians 3.18, in ever increasing splendor from, now watch this, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. This transformation is accomplished, like I said to you a few moments ago, not by our limited human efforts, but by his spirit that dwells in us. Now, you've got to stop, stop your struggling. Mama, where are you, sweetheart? She's, she went in the, she's out in the back curtain. I think she's talking to John, one of my board members back there. She said to me last night, honey, I walked up the aisle and I went by a man who was struggling to get healed. And she said he was a preacher. And I went up to him and she said, I said to him, sir, don't struggle. Jesus has paid the price. Just receive it and lift your hands up in the beauty of the experience and thank him for the work being done. She said that preacher took a hold of her by the hand and I guess he almost wanted to kiss her hand. But he big tears just rolled down his cheeks and he said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, it's there all the time. We just got to be reminded of it. doesn't want us to try to be the visible representation of Christ. You can't do it in your own strength. He doesn't intend for us to struggle to follow Christ's example. He doesn't intend for us to struggle, to think like Jesus thought, to walk like Jesus walked, to talk like Jesus talked. In our own power, it's absolutely impossible. But it is possible through the powerful life. It is possible through the powerful life. Say it, life. life. Say it again. Say it again. Life. Say it again. Life. It is possible through the powerful life that has been put inside us. Wow. 
watching. Stretch your hand out to the Father and say this after me. The God that I serve, God that I serve is a God of plan. Is a God of plan. He, is a God of purpose. he is a God of purpose. He is a God of design. He is a God of, design. He is a God of objectivity. And God, I am a part of your end time plan. And you have not planned any defeats for me. And that goes for you in Trinidad and you in the Philippines and you all over the nation of Brazil and all over Africa and Malaysia. God has not planned any defeats for you, for your nations to overcome you, but for you to overcome the environment of your nation and your country and the heathenism that represents itself in your nation. God has planned for you to overcome and take those kingdoms for him now. Do you have any idea why Paul could go through the trials, the circumstances, the prisons, the beatings, the shipwrecks, the stonings, and yet not be defeated? Just compare that with some of the people you see walking in the church. How are you this morning, Mrs. Smith? Well, I'm not too good. Is it any wonder we haven't taken the world with this milk toast Christianity? Paul could look at all of his circumstances. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 4. Paul could look at all of his circumstances. I like to hear the flipping of those leaves. Come on. Come on. 2 Corinthians 4. Listen to what Paul says. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Now, just a moment. What a far cry! Please, look, look at me for just a minute. Please, don't, don't get upset with this little Jew preacher, will you? We love you. Thank you. I love you too. What a far cry. Parallel that. We are troubled on every side, but yet not distressed. Trouble that with the cry that comes from so many people today. God, why? <laughs> why, why, why? I don't understand it. I love God. I don't understand it. Why am I going through these troubles? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Look here, Brother Sean. Do you, are you getting this? He faced the devil from his position of what? Saying, saying, we are distressed on every side, yet not trouble. Say, what are you doing, Brother Shul? I'm taking a second out to talk to the Father. Is that all right? We are perplexed, but not in despair. 
Do you remember the promise God gave to me one hour before this school of ministry opened? What was it? Our confusion will become the devil's confusion. Say it. Our confusion will become the devil's confusion. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. I don't know whether you, it's getting awful quiet in here. Cast down, but not destroyed. You're getting it. You're it's getting it. You're getting it. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the I mean you got to forgive me. If you don't do something I'm going to dance all over this floor. Jesus, that we may have this transfiguration, this work of conforming, bringing out in us that character. Jesus might be made manifest where in heaven where tomorrow where now on earth where in our bodies You may be seated. I've got to hurry. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not. Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed. Now, 17th verse, you ready for the bombshell? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. What is all this doing? It's transfiguring us. It's conforming us. It's bringing the expression out of us of something which is inside of us. All the glory that God has and all that he is. These things are working for us a far more weight of glory. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Brother, don't you get discouraged. You keep the devil on his side of the line. God's at work and he's at work in you. Let, let's go to the sixth verse. Let's back up. Go to the sixth verse. 
2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. How many times have you heard Brother Cyrillo pray? The God that created the heavens and the earth. God that spoke the worlds into existence. The God that said, let there be light, and there was light. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the doxa of God. To give the light of the knowledge of all that God has and all that God is. Where? In the face of Jesus Christ. We behold him who is the firstborn as the express image of God. And as we reflect on the glory of God, we behold all that God is, all that God has in the very image of Jesus Christ. And we, the next verse, and we have this treasure. <laughs> we have this treasure. <laughs> We got this glory. We got it, brother. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We have this treasure <laughs> in earthen vessels. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I can't go on anymore. Stand on your feet. Something's happening all over this building. Come on. Close your eyes. Forget everybody in this building. Go ahead, speak in the prayer language. If you don't have the gift of other tongues, in the name of Jesus, receive the gift of other tongues right now and begin to pray. Pray in the prayer language. Well, just go ahead and open your mouth if you have the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. I want you just to use the gift of God. The Bible says when we speak in other tongues, we're not speaking to each other, we're not speaking to man, but we're speaking to God. And wherever you are right now, if you need that gift, if you want that gift of the prayer language, I want to encourage you, just go ahead and open your mouth and let the first few words, the first few syllables come out of your mouth that are not your native language, that are not English. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the glory of God. Father, we thank you that it's Christ in us, the unsearchable riches of your presence. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your righteousness. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don, what a powerful download today. We literally are on a journey to discovering who God says we really are. Yes, and you've said a number of times that you know went from discovering our ministry to discovering who we really are, yes. but that is also gonna flow back out Amen. into our ministry. And I love the, uh, what I call the Teresa Cirillo revelation where the man is sitting in his chair, struggling, trying to get healed, think of every scripture that he can say, 
And as Dr. Cirillo told us in this segment, Teresa Cirillo, Mama Teresa, Mama to the Nations, just went up to him and said, you know, she didn't wave the Bible, she didn't shout, said, sir, don't struggle. Jesus has paid the price. Just receive it and lift up your hands. And the man wept uh, as he received his healing. And then also many preachers have preached on, we're bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. And it sounds grave, it sounds solemn, it sounds sometimes even sanctimonious. But Brother Srillo is saying, I'm so excited, I wanna dance because he knows as he puts off that which is natural, the treasure in the earthen vessel, and more than praying for anything specific, because you just prayed the perfect prayer will of God, tongues of angels that Greg just led you, but I believe that that treasure in an earthen vessel is gonna shine and radiate until we're together again for day five. Don, day five is going to be unlike any day five. Tomorrow will be the closing anointing and impartation service. Brother Srillo will be releasing the cap, the crown on this incredible manifested Sons of God School of Ministry revelation. You cannot miss it. I want to encourage you, if you can, I want you to come to the program tomorrow, to the session tomorrow in prayer, in fasting. I just felt as Don was speaking just a moment ago, sharing that experience that Brother Cirillo released to us of Teresa Cirillo walking and just quietly praying and seeing this incredible power of God and this presence of God on this pastor. The Lord said that tomorrow during this anointing service, there would be a release of an incredible healing anointing, that there would be a release of a restoration anointing, Ooh, that God was going to restore even somebody's oh, mind. You know that David said, he restores my soul. Thank that's you. talking about our emotions. That's talking about our mind. He said that the Lord, surely goodness and mercy follow me every day of my life. I want you to know tomorrow is going to be an incredible, special closing, anointing, impartation service. Brother Sir will be bringing the message on the seed of God, the incorruptible seed of God that's in us. I love how you said, Don, it's so true when Jesus said that even though John the Baptist was a great man, that when you have that seed of God in you, that there is a greater power, there is a greater place in God, not because of all of our incredible works like John the Baptist sacrificed his incredible life. And Jesus was saying, those who become children of God, those who receive the seed of God are greater than John the Baptist. And I know this, God sees something greater in you. God sees something greater for you than you see yourself. Whatever you do, stay connected. Tomorrow it will be life changing. Father, we thank you for your servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. We thank you for the passing on of this mantle, oh God. God, we thank you for this legacy center, Lord, that just reminds us every day that this ministry that you gave to your servant over seven decades was never the work of a man, but it's the work of your Holy Spirit. And God, because it is your work, it not only will never die, but God, it will increase and let your kingdom come, oh God. Yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. And everybody that is blessed, say, I am blessed. We can't wait to see you tomorrow, live from Legacy. Bring somebody to join tomorrow. We'll see you then. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.